All right, good morning, folks. I'm gonna do a quick update before heading into work. So I've gotten uh, quite a bit of progress on the inside. On the front end here, I did pressure test the air conditioning, had a few pinhole leaks to fix. Everything out here was okay. So I went ahead and put the front end back on the, uh, the grill frame. I've got some new hardware for attaching the grill in a different way. The The way that it was attached was real hokey and most of it was was broken. And I wanna be able to pull the grill out uh, quickly and easily. So, <clears throat> and the, the way it was before, it was just very cumbersome. The uh, Chevy Silverado's uh, uh, windshield washer tank has been installed and wired in, just made some brackets to hold it in place. Uh, should work well enough for filling. It's tucked in there a little bit, but that's the way it goes. I should have put this in a different spot. Probably would have been easier. I got to get turn signals going, so I want to do a, like a flexible LED turn signal strip up here. Maybe try and tuck it in there. I don't know. I've got some aluminum plates that I'm going to mill. If you look down the body here, that's tipped at an angle. And the mirrors I've got, they're back there. They want a flat uh, horizontal or vertical surface. Uh, otherwise, they'll be tipped like this. So <clears throat> I need to take those down to the shop, figure out exactly the measurement, and then I can pin it on the inside so it's connected to the frame instead of... This is just the, the metal body work here where they had their uh, mirrors attached. So kind of weak. But um, I'll get, get that going. Um, on the inside, it's been a lot of sheet metal work getting it buttoned up i did put so all the the what i'm calling the floor pan is twenty thousandths aluminum so it's thin and any place it's it's gonna support something i put some ribs under it like this foam here i accidentally blocked that uh, piece of plywood in there <clears throat> i'll have to cut it to get it out um, i had it there so i wasn't putting too much pressure that's just going to be under floor storage um because it's too thin a space there to try and put a door in and cutting doors and fitting in doors is i'm not looking forward to it i want to do as few of those as possible just kind of time consuming and difficult anyway i can stand on that without hurting it and it's built entirely of twenty thousandths aluminum with a couple of uh, braces underneath that i think they're even made out of twenty thousandths that's just bent into a channel so it's not it's it's just very light but strong enough to hold gear. So you can see there the the uh, the bracing, and that's all it is. A couple of braces and some one inch foam that's then glued with the, uh, the great stuff, whatever, um, the recommended glue that the manufacturer uh, suggests for gluing the foam. And I prepped the aluminum just by, you can see where I've hit it with the orbital and then I clean it with alcohol and then glue it down. And that seems to work real good. And then put weight on it to hold it there. I got this done last night. So that's the last uh, aluminum floor pan section I've got to do. That one's built. I just need to weather strip it and put it in once I'm done working on stuff over here. And that would button that up. Um, the back end is now sealed in. I cut an access panel in the back so I can get access to this air tank. I decided to do it this way rather than do an in-floor access because I'm gonna have, I think, some kind of a cabinet, like thin cabinet back here to kind of square off the bed. So I think there'll be something back there and in the corners, definitely. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna cut a hole in the floor to get to the, just to that. So I ended up doing a, a you know, a, one from the back. And it'll be hidden by the tire. I'm gonna have it attached with uh, nut certs to hold the panel in. You can see the panel back there. I'm just gonna put it together with, uh, hold it in place with, with nut certs. No latches or anything tricky like that. I do still have to cut my panel holes here and here for access to those two storage spaces. But they're all, I mean, they're they're buttoned up. They're sealed in. This, this is, uh, uh, is it this 
Oh, I can't remember the foam. So what do you make flip flops out of? But it's um, sandwiched on both sides. I just got the tape on there holding it in place while the, the foam glue set up. I was just making a seal through there just to keep dust and out of here. That's that's it. So it's not a big deal. And then just little guards here for rodents because they'll be able to get up in here. So once the deck goes down on, all this stuff gets hopefully in, you know impassable by a rodent. So that's the that's the plan there. I've got to I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do this corner whether or not I'm going to when I cut the foam panel out here when I cut the curves in it I could do a uh, a sheet metal an aluminum I can attach the aluminum to the foam ahead of time and have it extend up and then I can tie I can tie it to a strip of aluminum that I'll I'll put in uh, as a like an interior body panel which will help support the the uh, the edges of the foam I'm also going to have some, some aluminum you know channel where the doorway is so that'll help support that so I got a little bit more fab work to do back there before I set it down I've got to put uh, the water line in the fill tank tube is going to snake through here and, and pop out somewhere over here. This will get a little cover over it of some sort, probably behind a cabinet, but it'll get a cover that you could remove from the inside if you ever needed to get to that. Sorry, it's a mess. I just don't have time to clean up these days. Um, trying to figure out, uh, finalize the plans for how I'm going to close this section in. It's going to be three sections of the foam paneling. Um, shower here little landing here and then the deck here is the same level as this this deck uh, i need to get the kid out here to help me put those rivets in and then <clears throat> that's pretty close to being done i've got the cooling system installed for this is passenger heat i'll have to incorporate this i'm not sure if i'm going to have it i haven't quite figured out how i'm going to do that but um Anyway, there's a little heater core in there. I've got it sealed up right now. Obviously, it's not going to go anywhere, but I'll cut some holes and then put uh, flexible ducting in to direct that uh, heat wherever it's supposed to go. And then this is going to be my electrical distribution point. So everything will come into here and I'll have all my circuit breakers and uh, DIN rail mounted uh, connection points. I need to start doing my electrical diagram for the coach. So... For the cabin i'm um, not really i haven't gone up here and done much of anything i need to spray down the the uh the sound deadening and the thermal but i need to put a little bit of aluminum work uh in the along the walls here uh for armrests so i'll put some aluminum in there to to hold the armrests i've got to finish doing some rivets along that guy um to pin the body to that strip of aluminum and then I can spray all this. I need to spray foam, at least spray foam underneath, and then I can start setting these decks in. And that'll be a big, big day once this gets decked. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. So getting closer. Um, I don't know if I explained this yet, but so hot water from the the uh, diesel furnace, the S-bar comes in and out, these guys. So it'll just get routed back to here where the furnace goes. This is a coolant pump. So right now the coolant can push through the pump because uh, there's, I tried it and there's very low resistance through this pump. I think that's, it just, it'll flow through here. No problem with just the, the standard engine pump pushing. So coolant goes through here, heats up the water. So if you're running the S bar pump, you'll be able to circulate while you're driving, you're going to be able to circulate hot coolant water into the S bar coolant loop. And you could heat up a water tank or have uh, your heater core back here. If it's really cold, then you could be running the, essentially running the furnace without running diesel fuel through the furnace itself to heat the back end. Uh, also keep the water tank from freezing. Um, and then on a, uh, on a cold morning, if you want to preheat the engine, you fire up the diesel furnace and it'll send coolant through here, heat up the, the coolant loop, which will then you turn the pump on and it will push the coolant through the engine block and heat it up. So I think that's it for the inside. I did get, it's hard to see, but there are bump stops back there now. So I'll grab a flashlight. So 
So it's just three eighths. Hopefully you can see that. It's tight fit, but it works. And on the back end, there's the, uh, the access door. And I'll just put nut certs in that, seal it up, and that'll be that. Um, this framing on the on that end there, those are for supporting. It's gonna the foam panel will get sandwiched between that and the base on this little captain's chair. So I'll put a table in the middle here that you can get out of the way. I want to do a bench. And then the bench will fold out that way and you could have a, a spare bed. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.